Greetings! Welcome to the devlog for hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades. We're going to start off as always with a quick sound check. Make sure your speakers aren't up too high. Wonderful. So what have we got for you this week? Well, this week is all about brains. That is Sosig brains. Going to pull out our panel here. That's right. Anton has been tinkering in the old brain meets uh, for, for, for very good reason. This, is, this has been sort of a classic example uh, in my sort of development where a small and specific need has sort of bloomed out into a very large project uh, which has sort of in, you know encircled a whole bunch of stuff that was on my, man, it'd be really neat if I did X someday. And uh, yeah, finally ripped off the Band-Aid. So let's start right here with something simple, something new. We're going to have a guard here that we're going to spawn activated. So one of the things that a bunch of folks have rightfully sort of complained about over the years with these SOSIX is that they are oblivious in a very specific way, which is that if one of them is sort of guarding an area and another them of them clearly invisible range just has its like head explode, but that SOSIG doesn't say hear a gunshot or see you, they don't really react. Uh, this frequently happens in take and hold when you're like just far enough away and like using a fairly silent weapon or only shoot a single round. It's not enough to actually wake the SOSIG all the way up into its investigate state. Um, because it was just a single audio event. And so they just sort of like, you know, just stand there. And so one of the things that is really fun is that uh, Sosigs now can perceive uh, corpses or corpse chunks. Uh, this has required a pretty tremendous refactor of their perception systems to do this in a way that isn't a performance disaster. And that's one of the big things I've been working on this week. Uh, once I spawn these, you uh, you may also notice some new lines because one of the things that I uh, decided to add just off the cuff, I'd written them a while back, is another 50 lines uh, for the uh, so for the idle Sosix. So you might hear uh, hear a new line while they're while they're here. So let's get our testing gun here. So remember, right now I'm set to be invisible to these Sosix, so they can't see me, and I don't think they hear they don't hear my gunshots either. So when one reacts here, it's only going to be reacting to seeing a body. So we got a guard. We got another guard. Sorry, buddy. Well. And so that Sosig now is actually reacting well. to seeing the pieces of another Sosig. So it goes into a heightened investigate state. Oh goodness. Which oh. it can actually be in for a little while because it actually is going Hold to right react here. to each of the pieces. And then it will eventually oh. de-aggro. Let's see how long it takes him here. Yep, yep. Hmm. hmm. Can't see that invisible man with the anti-material revolver. I really should have worn my getting blood everywhere shirt today. Yup, you should have. So, <laughs> so yeah, so basically the way this, this system works is that I've created a new type of AI entity in the perceptual system that is called a passive entity. And a passive entity is something that can be detected by the, a the agent's visual system, but they react too closer to the sound of something in that they're aware that there's something, there's a passive threat in this area. They don't aggro all the way. They don't just start, say, shooting the corpse um, sort of thing, but keep getting pulled into an investigate state. But at the same time, I don't want them to just be stuck in that state eternally. Uh, that both wouldn't be fun, has some performance ramifications, etc. And it could permanently interrupt them from, say, patrolling to a new area. So basically, any sort of passive AI entity threat, like a piece of a Sosig body, that given agent will only can only be aggroed into the investigate state once, and then it will disregard it from then on in. So let's let's uh, let's hide some bodies. You go over here. You go over here. Cool. And then we're gonna uh, we're gonna spawn. So that was the case where the guard saw 
the Sosig die, but we can create another guard here, like so. And then come over here, grab a uh, fresh body chunk, and then throw it. And then the Sosig can huh? get aggroed by it. Huh? And then let's see if we throw another one into its perceptome. Huh? Oh, yep, it's easy now. What? So as you can see, it can sort of get chain dragged huh? from place to place. Huh? I'm so proud of him. He's learning. He's learning. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Boom! Done with that one. So, yeah. So, that is one of the big changes. Now, the other thing is that, that these sorts of passive... Uh, AI entities can be used for multiple things because once again there are there are a bunch of things that I would like the SOSIG to be able to react to in a way that pulls them up into a oh I'm, I'm looking around I'm worried about what's happening state without them shooting at it one of the big ones is doors obviously it shouldn't be the case that there's like a SOSIG guard standing right here and there's a locked door that I'm just behind and I unlock the door and open the door slowly in their presence and they just stand there going like, oh, oh wow, the, the door's opening. Clearly there's no one there. Like I want them to be able to react to it before they see the player, but not just immediately start blasting. So the, the door system will interface with this passive AI entity system, allowing me to have them react to other things. Um, and I've got a number of other ideas for things that could theoretically be in the environment that they could have a similar reaction to. So yeah, super excited about it. Uh, this is, this is, it's scary working on the H3 AI because this is already obscenely complex and easy to mess up, um, but it's about time this happened. Uh, I've got a bunch more things, so let's jump out. I'm going to, uh, to take you on a little tour of the way uh, a few of the AI systems work and talk to you about the way they're getting some serious upgrades and expansions. Yo, so. Out of VR, let's talk some more about brains. So yeah, let's let's pull up our notes here. T today we're gonna actually we're gonna be I'm gonna just uh, be sketching in Photoshop to describe some concepts. So y'all will be able to see my absolutely horrible mouse drawing skills. <laughs> but uh, but this should work pretty well. Okay, got the opacity, got the flow. Awesome, cool. Let's switch on over to this mode. Oh, fantastic. So, so let's first talk about some changes that have been made to SOSIG perception um, that are sort of dependent. Uh, this is something that I had actually thought about doing a while back and then just, I guess, forgot to implement while I was doing other perceptual changes. Um, but to start off, I wanna talk about a little bit about how SOSIGs see in the game and what has now been changed. So SOSIGs don't really have a traditional FOV the way that game agents and other games, especially like say stealth games have. Like the average stealth game agent has like, if this is from the top down, has an agent has like a view cone that is like this. It goes out usually to some sort of fixed distance like that. They can't see anything past that. And that's how they see the world. So SIGs, as, as a sort of, by default, have a more complex way of seeing things, which is that, if this is our SOSIG here, they have a max FOV, which is actually closer to this sort of thing looking forward. But this is just the max. And then they have a multiplication curve to that FOV that is applied over distance. And this is basically to make it so that they can keep track of you in combat when you're really up close and CQBing with them, but then at a further distance, they behave closer to the more traditional game agent. Um, and so what this ends up, ends up looking like is that they have an FOV that sort of starts out at about like 105 degrees or so, 
and then very very quickly actually probably not that quickly but yeah just for we'll, we'll, we'll do it not to scale sort of becomes like this over almost like the the spade symbol from a deck of cards um, with this being their sort of maximum view distance out at say like 300 meters or something like this. So this is to say that when you're very close to a SOSIG, they are very aware of what is around them. And when you're far away from them, they you have to be more directly in front of where they are looking for them to see you. And this, this solution was something I came up with when I was doing very early testing with the SOSIGs and found that when I gave them a traditional game agent uh, cone vision like this, especially when you're sort of like moving around in melee and their heads like wobbling around because it's a physics object, they kept completely losing the player. And so fighting them in like at melee range became absolutely trivial because they just couldn't keep track of you. So I had to give them this very wide sort of cone of awareness. The downside, obviously, is that people who like to play the game stealthily, as the sort of tool set of the game has gotten larger and people have made more levels, they're a little too hyper aware in every single state. And so what I have done is added a into the sort of configuration template of every SOSIG type, I've added three constants, which are effectively multiplications on the max range here, the max FOV here, and then the max range for hearing. And these multiples are for sort of three states that the SOSIG can occupy. Um, they're just 1.0 up at the most elevated state when, you know, when the SOSIGs are fighting, they're skirmishing, uh, et cetera, or they're in an investigation state. There's then a lower bar, which is probably, it depends on which one of these three parameters, but it's closer to like, say, a 0.3 to 0.5, where they are guarding something. They are engaged, they're still, you know, narratively looking for someone who might be an intruder, but they're, you know, they're just, they're a guard, they're hanging around, they're just thinking about, so thinking SOSIG thoughts uh, as, they, as they stand as a guard. And then there's an even lower state, which is going to be new for certain categories of SOSIGs in certain contexts, which is effectively the non-combatant state or a SOSIG that is, is just completely neutral, or they're just in the environment. These are ones that aren't necessarily like listening for gunshots or looking for an aggressor, and they're going to have significantly more collapsed perceptual ranges so that they might react if they get directly engaged in something happening, um, but aren't going to be like a gunshot happened 150 meters away and they start running around like mad. Um, sort of thing, because that's just not fun. That's not interesting. So, so this change has already been implemented uh, and is going to lead to some other changes. So the next system that is that, that I've been working on that has been in dire need of a change. This was one of those things like I architected this system a certain way and almost immediately was like, oh, I'm going to regret that and I never got around to doing the nasty work of completely tearing it out and replacing it, but I'm doing that now, which is the IFF system for our SOSIGs, um, which stands for Identify Friend or Foe. Right now, the way that IFF works in H3 is super simple. It's a simple integer. It's effectively, what team am I on? And every SOSIG disregards perceptual signals from anything that occurs on their IFF. So that's like if they receive damage, if they see an enemy, um, what have you, that signal gets discarded and so it doesn't aggro them and they don't target it. The problem, and, and the thing is, there was a smart moment for me to make this work differently Back when I worked on Rot Wieners, and I just, I was like, I know it's scary. I don't know how to change this smartly. But so in Rot Wieners, all of the human agents are on the player's IFF, which is zero, which means they don't attack each other. They don't attack the player and the Rot Wieners attack them. And that worked for that mode because there was that clear delineation of like, there's still only two IFFs. 
There's for, there's there's the player's side and the enemy side. But this system sort of falls apart um, when you want when you want a couple things. When you want to have a truly neutral sort of um, agent that no one targets by default but is not allied with the player, i.e. those agents can still uh, still want to attack the player. And theoretically, if you want that agent to be able to possibly change how it thinks about one group of agents, just representing everything with a single integer is not enough. And so the way that this system is going to work is that every AI entity in the system is now going to have, I'll probably end up making it a bit mask, um, but for simplicity of explanation, just think of it as an array, you know, of zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, dot, dot, dots. I'll probably just have 16 values because I can't imagine ever exceeding that. And then there'll simply be a sort of true, false, matrix for these values for whether an agent considers that IFF friendly or not. Um, and so what's cool about being able to do this is that theoretically it would be possible to have a, um, have an agent that doesn't treat the player as a combatant initially, but some sort of st so something occurs that then causes them to. So I could make an agent that is uh, that has you know zero set to true, but then if that agent receives any damage that is tagged with the player's IFF, as all bullets, explosions, etc., melee strikes are, they then would treat the player as an enemy from there forward. And then to pair with this, because obviously that could definitely still result in some odd situations where like, I'm in a room with two Sosigs. I whack one on the head with a frying pan. It's now my enemy. It gets knocked down to the ground and its buddy just stands there being like, wow, that's, that's something, but doesn't react. So the other system that I'm sort of architecting is effectively an IFF update shout which is where an agent that is it has been elevated all the way up to the skirmishing state essentially communicates within vocal range to other agents uh, around it and sort of update sort of flood fills enemy val like oh well IFF1 is now a threat every other agent around them will now realize that that is a threat but agents say on the other side of the level won't so this basically, this change allows for what we traditionally associate with stealth gameplay. You know, the sort of thing where you can get into a situation where you're not yet an enemy as far as the agents are concerned, but they can sort of all slowly be aggroed into like, oh, the player's here to stab us all and tear our heads off sort of thing. Um, just to have a more interesting uh, series of events. Um, for that. So that is, that is the other system that I am working on for them. That is terrifying because both because how to put this, I wrote that like almost every game mode in, in, in H3 interfaces with IFF or sets the agent IFFs in a slightly different way. Um, because it's just sort of, it's an integer. So I'm like just directly setting it in a bunch of places. So I have to very carefully, once I finish making this change, go through the game and make sure that every one of those game modes and ways that a SOSIG is being spawned are setting its IFF correctly, or I will break all those modes. So... Uh, but scary, but worth it. So yeah, so that is the other big system that I'm working on. And then, oh, and then thirdly, the the, the other thing that I'm working on is a, a simple system for, as I said, sort of non-combatant SOSIGs. And the way that non-combatant SOSIGs in this are going to work is they're going to be sort of globally tagged as such. They won't pick up objects off the ground, they don't try to use them, and they only occupy a, a sort of limited subset of the SOSIG state, some of which are new. They have a sort of a new idle state that isn't a guard, but they still try to return. If some if some other state sort of pulls them off, like they run, they're like, oh no, and they run away for a while. Once they're deagroed, they will sort of return to where they were supposed to be. But basically for a non-combatant SOSIG, if they get suppressed, or 
something goes into their, per, like a signal goes into their perceptome that is on an IFF that they're not friendly to, they basically panic and they go into a panicked flea state that if, if I sort of diagram out, I'm keeping it very sort of simple and deterministic at this point um, uh, to keep the navigation super cheap. I may make it more complex later, but I want to get it working at all simple first, um, which is that imagine we have, I just realized I drew this partially under the camera view. Let's try this again, Anton. There we go. Do, do, do. So let's, let's imagine that we have a, a room here like so. And we have a door like so. And say, I'm in, <laughs> the player is in here. They have a gun. There's an enemy here. And then there is a non-combatant Sosig here. The gunshot is going to hit uh, a target, say, you know, here, and then maybe against the wall. These can provoke suppression events within a certain range. So the, uh, the, the, the non-combatant Sosig has now received a suppression event, like, ah, oh, gunshot hit near me. They are going to, the, their, their IFF is going to be updated such that the player is now a scary thing for one. And that the last thing that scared them was here. It was a gunshot hitting near. So they will essentially pick a, what's called a new flee from point here and run in this direction. Um, and they might pick technically their, their, their desire might be to get here, but if they can only say reach here, or if this door shut and they can only reach here, they will basically flee. And if they can flee no further from their flee to point, they'll cower. So they'll just sort of like get down low. I might add some new voice work for them. Uh, sort of thing. It will probably be humorous instead of scared. It'll be more like annoyed uh, by this sort of situation because that's just funnier. Um, but importantly, they will then sort of make sort of these long form checks for whether they should repath away from the new thing they're most scared of. So this agent might flee first to the corner and then that suppression event sort of times out here and then what what ends up happening is they can still see the player and they're scared of the player so they're like i want to get away from the player so they might flee over to this point or if there's a back door they might say flee over to here so it's fairly deterministic but i think honestly that will the the, the whole point is basically to get them out of the combat space in a way that is fairly rapid and also humorous um, and doesn't require a lot of computation so that I can theoretically have a situation where there's a bunch of non-coms in a given, you know, area and it just doesn't obliterate performance to like add, you know, six or eight more agents into a situation um, without it getting too ridiculous. So, so I'm keeping their pathing cheap and keeping a bunch of their perceptual stuff cheap. So yeah, so that is what I'm working on for these uh and then and then once again once that system is done there's a couple basically to, to give it an idea you might be like hey wait a minute in the uh in the kappa coliseum uh, scene there's a bunch of uh elves that just run around aren't those non-combatant sosigs and the, the the janky way that i used to do this is that i would basically just put those sosigs on a invisible IFF. So I'd set them to, I think it's called negative three, three is the value I use. So no one else can see them and they have no vision, but large hearing distances. So they can hear the gunshots, be panicked by them, but they can't see anything and they don't have a gun and they can't see guns to pick them up. So they get locked in the perpetual I'm panicking and looking for a gun to pick up state, which is funny, except for the fact that they can never leave that state. Whereas in this case, I would like the non-combatant Sosix to be able to be spooked by something going on, run away from an area, and then possibly just go back to that area and go back to a de-elevated state as a loop. So... Whew. So yeah, so there is my there is my Sosig ramble. That is what I have been. Uh, oops, wrong button. There we go. That's what I have been working on. It's it's super scary <laughs> to uh, to work on the Sosigs. I was I was remarking to someone earlier. It's it's the 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 core Sosig class is a six thousand line class, and that isn't even like their hands. Uh, or their weapons, and the weapons contain a bunch of the logic for their use, but just the core SOSIG is about that long, and it's a bunch of interconnected systems 
that overlap and sort of like softly modify each other's behavior, which is why it's not all encapsulated. Because my goal with the SOSIGs at any point is to try to make them in those sort of like micro reaction windows interesting and surprising and funny and make it so they can screw up what they're attempting to do. And so a bunch of these new, these sort of state modifications are to try to fill them with even more of that sort of like zany vitality and ability to just be like, ah, and just sort of flop around everywhere. So, huh, so I hope you all found this interesting. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm continuing to work on this. Oh, and I completely forgot to mention part of the whole reason why these sorts of modifications are even done and why I'm like, why am I doing this right now is the fact that a whole bunch of this is actually necessary if I want them to be able to open a blasted door. It's like, before you can open a door, you must teach a SOSIG to think and believe. And it really is true in this case and that I need to teach them how to perceive things in the environment at all that aren't things they're just supposed to shoot. And then once I can do that and then allow them some sort of categorization and have these sort of passive events, I can actually have them be able to open a door. And once they can open a door, I'll be able to have them actually path complexly through our new grill house two story scene and, and without the player having to open or blast open every single door uh, that allows them to. So they don't just get caught behind them because that's glitchy and actually when they're getting getting caught behind a door like that that's actually a worst case scenario from a performance standpoint because they're perpetually trying to repath and via a path that can never get completed because they're ne they're never able to get through the door so so yeah so i have to kind of go all the way around like this to fix that sort of core problem but in the process it's going to create a whole bunch more gameplay that i'm really excited about so yeah, well, I hope, as I said, hope you found this all interesting and uh, yeah, I will have more things to, to show you folks and talk about next week as always. I hope you all have a uh, wonderful weekend and I'll see you soon. Peace.